Yeah, so in keeping with that with that previous conversation, that would then we would then have to look at this this way. Um, is human history undergraded by metaphysics? You know, metaphysics is the sort of stuff. A good example of a metaphysics is what I discussed in the previous video, which is the view that God uh, is existence itself. Uh, God is existence itself. Uh, and that we, that means human beings, and all of uh, existence which isn't, all of non human and non-human non -ex non existence, all of that is basically lodged within God or, or exists in God or exists because of God. You see, God, God is then the prime mover, if you please, the unmoved mover. God is uh, the original out of which we derive our being. Well, that's one metaphysical system. And uh, basically it posits that all of reality is undergraded by something uh, meta real something bigger something broader something greater than reality itself which gives reality its foundation uh, and and for thomas aquinas as we discussed in the previous video that is god god is existence as such and we are things that exist which draw our existence from god well and i then by by saying no 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 but Nobody stepped out of reality and looked and said, ha, ah, there's something outside of reality, meta-reality. Everything with everybody who's ever posited that there's something beyond reality that undergrids it, or contains it in this metaphysical way, says it from within reality. Uh, so it isn't, uh, it, is, it isn't something outside of history. It, it, it itself, metaphysics, as we can see in this example of metaphysics, is within reality, is within history. And so I want to take that turn. I want to take that more critical turn that looks at things from within and replace that metaphysical picture with uh, this more radical sense of historical contingency. And, as I, and so the way I want to go about doing that is... Uh, the cross, as I've already said. So, there's a theologian by the name of Jürgen Moltmann, who I think, uh, you know, is, moves us in the direction that I want to move with it, in his reading of the cross. And he, he wrote this book, uh, The Crucified God, which I think was his biggest book. I mean, his, his, his first notable book was A Theology of Hope, which he published before The Crucified God. But when, he, when The Crucified God got published, I think it overshadowed um, Theology of Hope uh, in, in terms of the popularity and notoriety that it gained Moltmann. But Jürgen Moltmann, uh, I can't remember whether this was the fourth or the fifth chapter, but he's got a chapter, I think it's chapter five, I might be wrong, which is about theism and atheism. It's about the Trinity and all of that kind of stuff. And there's something he says uh, somewhere in the middle when, when he's critiquing theism. So he asks the question, um, is the, the, the God of Christianity um, the God of theism? And so let's just explain these terms. The, the notion of God that I discussed, for example, in the previous video, uh, the question we were asking there was a very theistic question, does God exist? And I guess the notion of God I articulated there is considered theistic, it is considered to be theism, um, but, the, but it's also considered to be more than theistic. So let's leave that. At, at its most basic, theism is the belief that there is a being or something greater than a being, a being or super being, uh, that we are refer that we refer to as God, and that that being or that super being exists. Uh, and I'm going to broaden up this notion of theism to say exists or more than exists, if you please. Uh, so that that for me would mean I identify even apophatic theology within theism, or uh, as a way to try and broaden theism as much as possible, to broaden what I mean here by theism. Any such notion that 
God either exists or, or as we saw in the previous video, he more than exists. He's, he's the source of existence itself. So existing, existing isn't even appropriate to talk. But that all means, uh, even if we use the term existence under erasure, there is something that there, that is God. You know, so whereas atheism would be that no, there is no God. Well, Moltmann would then ask the question: Is the crucified God, you know, the God that is revealed through the crucifixion of Jesus, is this God the theistic God? And Moltmann's answer is, well, if I can summarize it, maybe pretty badly, not really, no, because for, for Moltmann, the theistic idea of God comes from the Greeks, not from the cross. Not from this Jewish story that has this very unexpected climax in the cross and resurrection. He's like, nope, uh, not not really. But he's not dismissive of theism. And, and by the way, the uh, the Thomistic model of the of the question about the existence of God that I propounded in the previous video. Well, that pretty much comes from uh, the way in which Thomas Aquinas was influenced by Aristotle, a Greek philosopher. So Moltmann isn't wrong. <laughs> Theism does take a lot from uh, the Greeks, uh, Greek philosophy. And Moltmann says, nah, look, I don't want us to dismiss the ideas we get from Greek philosophy, but our our categories of thinking about God must primarily be informed by the Judeo-Christian story, and then we can use Greek philosophy to elucidate that. But the terms of what we're talking about can't come from Greek philosophy, otherwise we're ignoring the way that God reveals himself in the Christian tradition. So ultimately, Moltmann says, no, no, no. Um, history, human history, human existence, isn't grounded metaphysically in, um, or isn't grounded in, in, in metaphysics. And so we don't use the arguments of metaphysics to arrive at the existence of God. It says, in fact, everything we see in the world denies the existence of God. Uh, injustice, for example, uh, death or entropy, uh, the fact that our best scientific, uh, I mean, Moltmann doesn't put it this way, but this is what kind of what he says. But our best scientific explanations tell us that the universe itself is contingent. At least that's the best argument now. Maybe that argument will be overturned at some point. But the, 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 the argument that has the most amount of uh, the most amount of consensus, scientific consensus by, by scholars and all that scientific uh, experts and all that by scientists is the idea of uh, the entropic dissipation, that the universe itself is contingent and that at some point, in at least in human time, the distant future, uh, the universe will expand so much that it can no longer be, you know, and it will cease to be, you know. Um, and others would say it's going to be some kind of heat death where things will heat up to the point where they can no longer be sustainable. Others would say it, it'll, it'll be everything will just get cold because energy will whatever and blah blah blah. I'm not a scientist so I can't explain this stuff scientifically. But okay, so the very fact that the world is contingent, it's, uh, the universe is contingent and it seems to indicate that it's moving towards oblivion. The fact that even in our tiny little planet there is so much injustice which seems to be ir irreparable, uh, ruin time, we can't undo uh, colonialism, apartheid. We can't undo the Sharpeville massacre. We can't undo, um, uh, the, the, you know, uh, the, the Holocaust. We can't undo uh, slavery. We can't. We can't go back in time and undo the, the 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 injustices of the past will forever have already happened. There is no indication in the way that reality is unfolding that some benevolent force undergrades existence. So Moltmann would say, if you had to argue uh, through the, the conceptual frame of metaphysics, arguing from reality as it stands, God would either be, you know, messed up, God would either be a very cruel God, or if you insist that the God that exists is a good God, and that God just doesn't exist. And so Moltmann says, we shouldn't try to make God the God of theism. 
the God that we, we reach by ways of cosmological arguments, scientific or pseudo-scientific in my opinion, arguments about the existence of God, these philosophical, metaphysical speculations. Because all of those don't point us to the God of Jesus Christ, this benevolent God who suffers and dies. In other words, he says, look at the very fact that the God we're talking about when we're reading the Christian story, well, when that God enters the world, he's killed. Meaning, whatever this God is, he isn't necessity. He isn't th that which the world as it is uh, uh, cannot do without, because it kills him. He's precisely that which contradicts the world so radically that when he steps into the world, the world wants him gone. He says, ha, that's that's a complete twist. That's, that's completely different from the way that you would reason your way to God if you were moving through these metaphysical speculations. And I would add scientific and all of that other stuff. And so this is not the God of science. It's not the God of metaphysics. This is, this is not the God of apologetics. So Maltwan would say, let's not undergrade reality, human history in its contingency in uh, on metaphysics. No, no, no. But he he would then say metaphysics itself is a part of human history and all of the contingency. And human history, you know, should be uh, undergraded by the cross, the history of God, the God who comes and dies and rises again from the dead. That's the basis of human history. So metaphysics would be a region in human history which itself human history uh, is lodged within the history of god so although human history the history of the universe the arc of the universe, all of that is headed towards oblivion and basically in and of itself it has no intrinsic future because it is undergraded by the story of god of the history of god it has a future, not in and of itself, but because God has a future. Um, human history, by being undergraded by the history of God, has a future because of God. That's Moltmann's argument. So Moltmann would then say, we need to read the story of the cross. Uh, oh, rather, we need to graft human history and all of its interventions into the story of the cross as the history of God. Uh, that's a pretty bad summary of what Moltmann would say. So then Moltmann would say, we can use metaphysics to elucidate certain aspects of, of the story of the cross. But metaphysics, metaphysics itself uh, is not what undergrades the story. Ultimately, it can break down. So the end of metaphysics that the post-metaphysicians, you know, uh, post-modern, so-called post-modern philosophers, and thinkers have pointed out that while that that's not a problem for Christian faith because ultimately metaphysics is just a way of elucidating the story and not the story itself for Moltmann. Well, for but Moltmann is being very sneaky here. This is something of a sleight of hand. I think he opens up the possibility for a genuine departure, genuine. Uh, rejection even or uh, he, he steps out of that game the metaphysical game uh, which will force you to ask questions like does God exist I mean for he outright says atheism and theism are outside of the Trinity so he completely takes God right out of that but I think he leaves the back door open for uh, um, theism denuded from its metaphysical baggage to slip back in because ultimately, there's a sense of God that undergrades uh, a, a sense of God that and certainty about God that undergrades uh, and insulates uh, his notion of hope from contingency, which is what I was critiquing lot, uh, uh, previously. I mean, even his articulation of God doesn't come from the sky. It didn't fall to earth. People started saying these things and traditions emerged in history. We still don't get out of the problem of history. But I do think I like Moltmann more than I like Thomas Aquinas. Or oh, let me say I like the theology and the philosophy it, it, it implies more than the theology and philosophy of Thomas Aquinas here. I prefer the idea of 
uh, reality being grounded on the cross over the idea of God as being itself. And here's why, here's why I, I prefer it. I think the seeds to deconstruct Moltmann's own senses of certain sense of certainty are already there in Moltmann's theology, because the cross itself can't be a point of certainty, but rather this radical critique of all certainty. Uh, and this is something Moltmann so beautifully illustrates in, I think, uh, chapter three. Oh, is that the one where he deals with the crucifixion of Jesus? I think it's chapter three. Yes, where he deals with Jesus being rejected as a heretic by his eth eth ethno-religious community uh, and being uh, rejected as an insurrectionist by the state, the Roman Empire, and being rejected by God. Because here's, here's, here's the kicker. Um, everybody who forsook and abandoned and rejected Jesus did so rightly because even God rejects, rejects Jesus on the cross uh, or abandons him on the cross. I mean, the, the word that's used by Paul in the in the book of Romans, whenever it says God gave him up, gave Jesus up, is the exact same Greek word that's used in the Synoptic Gospels to say Judas uh, betrayed Jesus. So, yeah. So, but here's the thing. Um, if that's the case, uh, there's a sense in which the cross itself is something radically um, negating. And whatever affirmation that comes from the cross, and this is something Moltmann elucidates very well as well in the next chapter, I think chapter 4, where he talks about the resurrection. Well, whatever affirmation comes out of that doesn't undo the negation, but it is an affirmation of the negation as negation. Let me put it in explicitly theological language. The resurrection is not just the resurrection. It's the resurrection of the crucified one as the crucified one. In other words, it, re it affirms, it resurrects Jesus as the one who was rejected. In other words, it doesn't say, ah, actually it was a mistake or a misunderstanding. No, no, no. That was a perfect understanding. The one who merits the rejection of his ethno-religious community, um, the state, and even God, must, is the one who is now re resurrected as precisely that exact same one who was rightly rejected by his ethno-religious community, by the state, and by God. So, that's like, oof, that's uncomfortable. That's, that's unsettling. And I think if we probe this unsettling nature of Moltmann's uh, reading of the cross, which I think is a brilliant way, and I think a faithful way to read the faithful to the tradition, faithful to the New Testament, and I even think faithful to, uh, as far as his historical research goes, at least the cross part of it, is faithful to what I think probably happened to the man himself. You know, Where am I going with this? Um, the God we encounter, if, if, we, if we ground history on the history of God, and by God we mean the God we find at the cross, the crucified God, the God who uh, the God of, who, of, of, of the one who cries, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, then history is the, the unsettling element, element of history that we already spoke about before in entropic dissipation and the lack of justice and all of that isn't negated in the affirmation of the Jesus who was crucified, but is deepened. Um, to, so, such as to say, all of history's negation, all of reality's uh, suffering and tragedy is deepened to the point of God. Even God, who undergrids reality, is this radically uh, unsettled, not just unsettling, but unsettled uh, aspect of reality. And so, if that's the God who's the ground of reality, then that God would have to be the, gr the, the groundless ground of existence, the groundless ground of being, the uns—it's unsettling. It's unsettling all the way down. There's no point at which we have this solid ground to stand on, even in God, because God is crucified. And whatever we're going to think of as the resurrection doesn't undo this. So that's the sort of thing I want to explore. So ultimately, I think Moltmann loses his nerve uh, because. He ultimately ends up giving more to, more to the resurrection than I would 
uh, which is not to say I would negate the resurrection. I would say we need to always hold the feet of the resurrection to the fire of the cross. It always, so that the resurrection doesn't become some form of utopia, because ultimately, I think Moltmann does end up lapsing into utopia. And that's a story for another day. I think my interest in these videos are not to elucidate the theology of Moltmann, but really to talk about my sense of God. So if God then, and this is the, these are my parting shots, if God then is not that which grounds reality and keeps it secure, at least in my opinion, uh, then the question, th then what we arrive at uh, when, when we talk about God um, I think we should take seriously the fact that the world can reject God and the world can push God out and business can run as it can be business as usual after the death of God uh, this would be Holy Saturday the day after Good Friday it can be business as usual it means that whatever God is God is not something overbearing something it's not we don't approach God through uh, necessity which is what metaphysics has tried to do which is why to in other words it's God this necessary being but we approach God unconditionally in other words with or without God reality can go on so that I think is the element of the Christian story that opens us up to something that can undermine Jürgen Moltmann's own sense of of certainty from within Jürgen Moltmann's theological picture and that's what I think I want to probe and so my turn to um, the, these more deconstructive thinkers you know guess Jacques Derrida but more especially John Caputo John D Caputo in his weakness of God or weak theology or radical theology particularly in the question of the cross as he articulates it in Cross and Cosmos a theology of de uh, dangerous glory well my, my attraction there is God can go God goes on as not a necessary being and not even a being but as something less than being but more than nothing so he's not nothing but he's not a being god goes on in this crucified form so god is not a necessary being god is a name one of the names we have for the unconditional uh, so maybe we can talk about that in the next video god is the unconditional